What is going on, Governor's Chisco here, and today we're going to talk about countering commanders. That's right, it's a countering clinic! If you want to get better at countering whatever the heck comes out in Rise of Kingdoms, because guess what? There's always going to be new commanders coming into this game. Then you should like and subscribe. We've got a bunch of videos on this topic, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I thought we'd do a clinic where, as a group, we could talk about different commanders that we might be facing, different ways we could counter them, the approach that I use when figuring out, like, gosh, what might we go test to see, like, whether or not we can beat it and what might be good. So here we are, and it's going to be a live stream. Hello, one and all. Good to see you. A bunch of folks in the chat. I see Foxman, channel member, stay lazy. Anne is in the chat, channel member. The Mood, another channel member. Sophie, four in the chat, dropping emojis. Eggs and bacon. What's going on, my friends? Holy moly. Thank you all for showing up. We're going to have a grand all time. Sniper Trader says, will you please give me a shout out? You're the best. Well, there you go. Shout out. Tiny Rick and Sebastian, a bunch of channel members saying hello. What's going on? Uh, we just got up. We do have our, our caffeine. This is actually a little too hot to drink right now. A little too hot to drink right now. How I counter combos, spend millions of gems. You know, the funny thing is that um, I don't know that you can spend gems to counter things exactly. I mean, there's some amount of that you can. You can spend gems to contribute towards your countering. We'll talk about what those things are. But a lot of it is not gems that you need to spend. <laughs> oh, pardon me, sneezing on stream. Hashtag most awkward. Hashtag most awkward. Let's talk about countering stuff. Let's talk about countering stuff. And I even want to go backwards because there's some topics that are really obvious. There's some topics that are really obvious. We can cover them really quickly and you can use that information. And then we can get into the nitty gritty because there are a lot of details that we can go through in countering that once we start to talk about commanders and builds, we can really go down some rabbit holes. Diego Guzman Fernandez. What's going on, dude? Good to see you in the chat. A lot of folks here. Shry's journey, you made it. So when we talk about countering commanders, okay, first and foremost, there are some optimizations you should make with whatever commanders you're going to use to do the countering. Um, one of them is in the commander tab. I actually forgot about this at the very start of KVK, and I was on voice with my alliance, and I was like, hey, ooh, hey, look at that. Super chat, real early in the stream, Reap Havoc, 1382, $5 Australian, good morning from Australia, let's go 1382, war, war, war. <laughs> thank you for that super chat, and thank you for that donation, I do really appreciate it, and good luck to you on 1382. So, um, one of the things I had forgotten to do is actually set Attila and Takeda as my uh, charge captain and knight head. We figured that out really fast, really early, because I was saying, like, all right, I want, like, a QA, right? Like, I want somebody to check that I've done everything. I have a kingdom buff. I have a token. I have um, a rune. Like, and I was just going through this list, making sure, like, do I have every buff? And once we were sure that I did, someone mentioned, wait a minute, you didn't mention the commander view. And I went in and I made these changes. So make sure that whatever you're countering with is here, okay? That's easy. This is the easy part. Um, the next thing we can talk about is the civilization that you choose. Now, if you are going to be the captain of a defense or a rally or a counter rally, then you might consider also swapping your civilization leading up to something like, you know, a pass of a certain level opening in KVK. Uh, we switched to Arabia to elevate the effectiveness of of our Attila Takeda. Uh, for a number of reasons, this is very effective. We've got 5% extra cavalry attack. We've got 5% extra damage from the rally, which is huge. That is a lot, because all of the damage is normal attack damage. Um, and we get we do get the special unit. I think this is pronounced Mamluk? Mamluk? I don't know. Um, the way that special unit works, and I explained this in my video yesterday, is that it contributes stats kind of like how a T3 has stats, and a T4 has stats, and a T5. They all have different stats. Uh, a Mamluk has slightly different 
stats as a T4 or as a T5, then it's, you know, normal generic equivalent. Uh, and it's going to have slightly better stats. So that that is worth uh, considering, but it's not going to elevate as a whole, like the effectiveness of the sort of garrison or rally in the same way that 5% damage does and 5% flat cavalry attack does, because that applies to everybody's units contributing, not just yours. Now, one civilization that pretty much every one of our defending players chose is Rome. And the reason that they chose Rome is that you get the legionary, which, you know, like the Mamluk, a special unit, it's good. Um, but the amplifier for everyone and their effectiveness is increasing the defense by 5% of infantry. Um, there, this is also very good in the open field, of course. Uh, the 10% march speed is very good. So some of those players also really smashed in the open field. I know Maximus was one of our players who wasn't actually a garrison captain, but he was just smashing in the open field. He also went with Rome for the special unit and also uh, the infantry stats and the march speed. And I guess it's 5% march speed, not 10%. 10% march speed would be insane. 10% march speed would be insane. So um, civilization matters. There are other civilizations you could be looking at if you were looking at, like, defending or attacking. Uh, we can talk about what those would be based on what it is that you're rallying with or countering with. As an example, um, for a very long time, I used Ottoman. Ottoman is amazing because you're getting the 5% extra skill damage. And in a time when your garrison is doing lots of skill damage, like let's say it's uh, Wu Zetian and Esong, then the 5% extra skill damage is really good. If you used all archers, the archer health is really good. And the Janissary is also helpful. So that's civilizations. And this is just tip of the iceberg, baby. This is, this is just tip of the iceberg. Uh, show your talent tree. Richard, Esong, Genghis, Saladin, Screenshot. All right. Fly Gaming, we'll give you some talent trees. We'll give you some talent trees, but we're going to stay on topic for just a moment more. And we're just going to talk then about the city skin. Um, the city skin is yet another way of amplifying whatever it is that you're doing in your garrison or rally. Of course, you want to go in and optimize this based on what it is that you're fighting. By default, there's no bonuses. However, lots of skins are available that give you an advantage for one thing and a disadvantage for another. Um, optimally, you want to find a pairing of advantages and disadvantages that only gives you advantages and there's no disadvantages, right? So if you're filling a garrison or a rally with only one unit type, for instance, if we use all infantry in a garrison, then this really sick OG first skin they ever released in the game, the Trick or Treat skin, looks pretty good. 5% uh, infantry attack and you don't care about the archer health. Uh, you know, if you were launching Attila Takeda rallies, this is what I was using, Sour Song. Uh, this was the OG Thanksgiving skin, the first year the, that the game was out. Uh, 5% of cavalry attack, and you lose some archer health. Well, I don't care about the archer health. Um, of course, there are some legendary skins available. Uh, we have one of those skins here, 10% uh, infantry health. Uh, if we were launching archer rallies, we would have been using Saint's Halo. This is another legendary skin. Uh, we actually did testing at a pass level 1 to figure out whether or not the 5% skill damage was better than just 5% flat archer attack. So we tested this skin over here against, I think it was maybe a, a, this one here. No, that's infantry health. Um, which one was it? Here it is. Against this one here, Silent Night. We tested the two against each other, and we actually found that the 5% skill damage was noticeably better. It was noticeably better than the 5% archer attack. We didn't go to statistical significance, so... You can take that for what you will as to whether or not it's like the absolute truth. Um, however, you do want to set your skin. So if you're a rally leader or defense captain, these are all things you need to be thinking about. And it's easy to forget like any one of them. And it's kind of a big deal to have, you know, if you accidentally had the wrong skin and you have like ne negative 5% of stats instead of plus 5% of a stat to a unit, like that's a 10% difference in stats from where you could be. Uh, and that's a big deal. So make sure you get all of that right. This is like 101 of countering. Um, the 201 of countering is going to be looking at commanders. Uh, Brian Lukmandatir says, what's the best civilization for archers? I'm going to go with Ottoman. I also like Britain for the troop training, if you're training lots of troops. 
Um, let's see. Lots of folks advising on how you select multiple units. That's cool. Uh, Germany is good. Yes, Germany is great. Um, okay, I'm just cruising through the chat. A lot of fans of Germany. Wow, interesting. Okay, so now let's get into the commanders themselves because this is really the meat of the clinic today is about commanders. Um, which commanders are you going to choose and what builds are you going to use and sort of all of that other stuff we just talked about is what wraps around the commanders that you've chosen, right? Like, but the centerpiece of all of this is getting the right commanders and builds lined up and figuring out, like, what the heck do you even test? Uh, Brooks Weaver is asking, what about Japan? You know, this is actually a very interesting question. Um, I found myself doing my own digging yesterday uh, in preparation for this about civilizations, and I noticed that I think there's only one infantry civilization, only one, that gives 5% of infantry stats. Isn't that interesting? I realized that France gives 3% troop health, not 5% infantry stats, even though their special unit is infantry. And I continued on, and I realized China, oh no, not China, Japan, 3% troop attack. Well, look, if you've got a mixed garrison that's got lots of different troops in it, then yes, this is good. But the special unit is infantry, you wouldn't want this if you had full infantry in a garrison. Again, you want Rome. So I thought that was kind of interesting that actually for infantry, there is one choice and one choice only uh, for a garrison captain, and that is Rome. Uh, and, and, you know, we put our money where our mouth is. Uh, Hulk from our alliance, I know he uses Rome exclusively. Um, the dude is all in on infantry and like, yeah, it's the truth. What about the Korean civilization? Um, so I used the Korean civilization very briefly in my time in Rise of Kingdoms when I was powering out T5 and I was doing a lot of research. Uh, and even then, it was sort of debatable. Uh, you get the most valuable, the most value from this with the shortest amount of time that you use it. By that, I mean, in a perfect world, you would switch to Korea do literally all of your research for T5 in like a day and then switch to something else. I know that's completely unrealistic, but like the hospital capacity is not really giving you passive benefits. It's giving you passive benefits, but like, let me give an example. Um, in Spain, over time, you're getting resource production, right? So for you to go Korea, you need to be getting more value from doing research speedups than you would be from getting the resources for free that you would have from something like Spain. Do you see what I mean? So the longer you're slowly working your way toward T5, the less valuable this becomes relative to other things that would have been rewarding you over that same period. This is maybe more in-depth than I thought we would go on civilizations, but I think these are pretty good insights. I hope these are helpful. Uh, I switched from Ottoman to Germany, thinking it's a good move from being free to play. Was it really? I don't think Germany is a bad choice. Um, you know, look, the AP recovery is good if you're spending it. I think the cavalry attack is good uh, if you're in on cavalry. And the troop training speed is good. <coughs> uh, pardon me. Oh my gosh. Step away for 30 seconds to sneeze. And what is this? Stay lazy. Just want my sport scoreboard again. Not once. Not twice. Not three times. Not four times. Not five times. Not six times. Seven times. Oh my god. Well, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a just lazy scoreboard. <laughs> Thank you for those donations. Thank you for those donations. Warren. $10 super chat, bearded psycho from Assassins in 1505. Send the Kleenex and greetings. Gosh darn these allergies. Uh, do I have the flu? No, I can't have the flu. I have a flu shot. That's not how that works, but we'll pretend that that means I can't have the flu. I don't think I have the flu. I feel much worse if I have the flu. Should I buy Minamoto Yoshitsun? No, did I say that right? Maybe. Eh, I have a woo, says Last Spartan. I don't even have a woo, man. Give me a break. I don't even have a woo. So, um, 
Should you buy Minamoto? I made a whole video about this. You should definitely check out my Should You Buy Minamoto video. Um, I guess that's not what it's called. It's like, is Minamoto still good? That's what it's called. Is Minamoto still good? It gives you an in-depth analysis of exactly that. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, how do you get Minamoto sculptures only buying chests? That's right. Minamoto only comes from VIP leading up to VIP 10. Uh, I have some pretty extensive analysis of the different pack levels that you can get here and what's contained within them. Uh, so that's definitely worth investigating. Yo, Chiss, is Alex worth it over Richard? I think that Alex is phenomenal. Um, Alex and Richard are both very good commanders. Uh, let me talk for a moment about their roles. Um, Richard is still a premier number one top tier garrison commander in Ark of Osiris League. That to me is a pretty high endorsement. Um, he's still great in the open field. He's still totally fine on your city wall. Um, I worry a little bit about the number of troops that are going to overflow your hospital if you use him on your city wall, but he's still really good there, quite frankly. Um, Richard I is fantastic. He is a fantastic commander. Um, he's also really good in Sunset, by the way. Uh, a commander like Alexander the Great also is exceptional, uh, exceptional, but in different ways. Um, Alexander the Great is more of a team player enabler commander. Um, he's amazing in the open field. He's got a lot of march speed. He can get around. Uh, he is throwing around shields, which, again, is a team player enabler. Uh, if you do get the expertise skill, he's debuffing a group of enemies, which, again, is a team player enabler. Um, but he's more of an open field commander. You're not going to use him in the garrison um, at all. You shouldn't use him in the garrison. Uh, he is obviously one of my favorite commanders. I made you know my whole logo kind of revolve around the aesthetic of this commander. Um... Overall, I would say Richard I is more versatile. He's a more versatile commander. Um, by the way, Alexander the Great, I should cover a couple other things that Alex does well that Richard does not. Um, Alex is really good for rallying stuff, and Richard is not. I mean, like, people use Richard, and it confuses me. Um, I would not rally things with Richard I. I would rally things with Alexander the Great. I think he is exceptional for that. So it's sort of a different direction. If you want to go a more defensive route— um, and, you know, generally, I have a hard time believing that Richard I will leave the meta entirely. Um, I, I think, like, Richard I is really solid. Uh, I do also think Alexander the Great is amazing. I've invested in him, but for more offensive open field play. And also, he's very good in Sunset. Whew. Detailed answer. Richard primary or Alex primary in the open field. Haley, what's going on? Good to see you in the chat. Good to see you in the chat. Um, gosh, that was an interesting question. Richard primary or Alex primary? They do different things. They do different things. Um, if we look, really what we're talking about when we say primary or secondary, uh, we're really talking about the talents. Assuming that you have them both six star, uh, level 60, you've got the gear for infantry, so it doesn't matter, like, you could switch it around between them. So what we're really talking about is, like, which set of talents do I care about more? Um, and they both have the infantry tree, so really the only thing we're talking about now is the attack tree versus the defense tree for open field. Um, I really like burning blood if you think you're going to get swarmed. Um, that said, if you think you are going to get swarmed, you're kind of just dead in the water anyways. Um, this is good for prolonged fights, effortless, uh, and Armor Joints, I think, is really good as well for reducing the damage you take. Um, I actually think that now that we're talking about this, it isn't the talents at all. It isn't the talents at all that should drive this decision. Um, it's actually the fact that when people see a Richard I primary, they don't attack it. So I think you should use Richard I as the primary. Um, not because it's necessarily more effective. It might be. Uh, but because people are going to ignore you. And if they ignore you, you can do whatever you want. Um, I actually used Richard I with Esong, uh, which sounds really insane, except, you know, look, like, especially as a content creator, I get targeted a lot in the open field. Um, so I wanted to be able to do AoE damage, but I, like, couldn't. Like, the second any of my DPS-related commanders went anywhere, they're just down. So I tried to hide high DPS commanders behind tanky commanders 
And that actually started to work where people would ignore my Richard the First and my Charles Martel. And, you know, behind door number one is an Esong Yehe, right? And, like, behind door number two is some other high DPS commander. So um, I don't think that's the most optimal pairing, strictly speaking. Um, but when you talk about, like, how humans actually interact with what you're doing, it is, I think, optimal, as it turns out, even though, strictly speaking, it would not be optimal. Weird, right? Uh, Deathstroke says, since you aren't a rally leader, I'd go Britain, Enzo, so you get more troops. And hello, everyone. Nice Sunday. Uh, good to see you, Deathstroke, in the chat. Good to see you in the chat. So, any use for Kusunoki's debuff removal? Well, let's get right back on track. Let's get right back on chat. C7 in foot. Um, yeah, they're advising about Kusunoki. And one of the things that we need to talk about, one of the things that we need to talk about, there he is, is countering commanders. And again, this is a clinic on countering commanders, right? One of the things you should do in any game where you're like trying to figure out what my options are, this is true of Rise of Kingdoms, this is true of any game, is to say what unique effects or abilities are at my disposal that may or may not be helpful, and to take a holistic look without judging, right? It's easy to go in and in your head, I'm like, all right, like I know the effects are this and this. Like, no, look at every commander, every commander, and say, is there something here that could be useful? And you have to sort of read every skill to remind yourselves, because Kusunoki clears all negative effects from himself. Isn't that, that is kind of interesting, right? Well, guess what? When we talk about commanders and special effects, let's look at Attila here. Attila is applying a debuff that makes it that over the next four seconds, if this triggers, you take extra damage. Well, guess what? Kusunoki says, see you, debuff. Bye. Bye. There's the door. Um, so that seems good. Maybe not the sole reason to use it, but that seems good. If Kusunoki were in the garrison, well, guess what? This other debuff over here, 25% defense, if it happens to have been applied, gone. What else? Is there anything else in here? I don't think so. I don't think so. So there's two negative effects from Attila. Let's get a look at Takeda. Assuming that, you know, these are the commanders that you're trying to counter with a Kusunoki, right? Um, here's another really important debuff. Fierce as the fire. Um, debuffs this an enemy target for four seconds. Well, guess what? Kusunoki clears that debuff. And that debuff makes it so that you're dealing 30% extra normal damage. So the way that you look at Kusunoki's ability is a little bit different. What you would say is make it so the enemy does 30% less normal attack damage if the, for, for whatever duration that that debuff was remaining. Makes it so that you clear the debuff over here, you clear the debuff over here, and when you think about that, it makes the active skill on Kusunoki look a whole lot different. Do you see what I mean? Do you see how that works? I think it it's pretty important. Okay, so Leonidas says, how does silence really work? So silence is another effect at our disposal that we should talk about. Um, let me just wrap up the Kusunoki thoughts here. Um, someone is saying in chat, by the way, um, it's Leonard saying Kusunoki and Esong as a garrison. I can tell you, we did not test Kusunoki and Esong. I, I, I find myself unconvinced that the volume of stats on Kusunoki is sufficient to make up for sort of the, our interest in this debuff. Like it's good, but I don't think the package of Kusunoki is good enough. You're not getting enough value from the AoE, I think, for that to be worth it. So I'm going to say that it's probably not a a valid counter at the end game level of things that you should be looking at for counters. Uh, but Kusunoki could be good in other contexts. So um, let's look at other effects. Um, one of those effects we need to look at is silence. So <clears throat> there's a couple commanders that have a silence effect. Um, the first we need to look at is... Herman. <clears throat> so, deals massive damage to the target and decreases the target's rage by 100. Um, now, that's important 
decreases target rage is very good, and silences the target for two seconds. Okay, so silences the target. What does that do? Um, silences the target makes it so that they cannot use their active skill for two seconds. Um, they still accumulate rage, however. So this is not going to do anything if they were at zero rage and you silence them, I think. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to do anything because they're still going to be accumulating rage. They weren't going to use an active skill anyways. And then boom, they get to the point where they would use an active skill and this silence has already fallen off. Um, for this reason, I like to chain commanders together that do silence effects. Um, the commander that you would want to pair with is going to be El Cid. And the order in which you have to pair them to get a three-second silence chain is Herman primary, El Cid secondary. Um, El Cid does a disable of normal attacks and active skills. This is different from a silence. So the reason I like this as a chain is that you get two seconds of Herman's silence and then the one second of El Cid silencing the active abilities, but also the normal attacks. Now, this is really interesting in a world with Attila Takeda because here you can remove their normal attack for one second. And I know like, okay, like you just remove their normal attack for one second. Is that a big deal? Well, it kind of is. Like if you remove their normal attack for one second, you just reduce their damage by 10%. See what I mean? I guess, I guess I'm assuming you do this once every 10 seconds. How frequently are you doing this? Um, if you get this effect off every seven seconds, maybe that's more reasonable for the amount of rage gen you have, right? Like that's a one seventh damage reduction right here. That's pretty good, isn't it? What if you had five or six of these guys swarming the target? The target is going to have a lot of rage generation, is particularly Attila Takeda, right? They're going to get a lot of rage generation, but if you can keep them unable to do damage for, you know, four out of every, you know, seven seconds or whatever that is, five out of every seven seconds, that seems pretty good to me, doesn't it? That seems pretty good to me, doesn't it? Right? Um, the answers to how you can counter Attila and Takeda are, are on this screen. It's, it's in this screen, in the abilities that are available to you. And this is true of literally any commander that comes into the game, right? We revisit these abilities. And some of these are things that we talk about all the time that are universally good, right? So Joan of Arc, universally good at buffing and uh, generating rage. And we know this, right? We know that Joan of Arc is good. We talk about that extensively. Um, when we look at a commander like Ethelfled, right? Like we know their debuff. Where are you at, Ethel? We know Ethelfled's debuff is very good. We talk about this. It's universally good. But when new commanders enter into a meta, right? When, it, when, when a metagame shifts in any game, the thing we have to then go do is reassess the tools in our toolbox for handling that meta. And I can tell you, right, like there are two hard counters I've seen and possibly a third. And we'll even talk about this third combo. The person who shared it with me said they wanted me to share it. I have not seen sufficient evidence to really confirm that this third route is valid. Um, but I'll share it with you and y'all can test it. Um, Let's see here. I am getting some coordinates. I heard that there is a KVK that is pretty interesting. So we'll go look because I think this might be in that KVK. I'm not sure. Let's look and see if we got something spicy going on. Do we have spice? Do we have spice? Mm, I don't know if I call this spice. There is a pass. Maybe there's spice. What's going on? Level four pass. 55 minutes. All right. Well, that'll get spicy in a bit. That'll get spicy in a bit. We're not there yet. So let's get back to countering Attila Takeda. Because again, I've seen two hard counters. Two 
hard counters. Um, and a third possible counter, which we're going to review together. So let's continue to look at our toolbox here, okay? We're going to continue to look at this toolbox of commanders that we have. Um, but I want you to do, because this is a clinic, right? I don't want to be the one just kind of lecturing up at the podium. You all tell me, like how you shared Kusunoki, like how you shared silencing. What is another tool in our toolbox that we can use here? You all tell me. What's another tool that we could go look at in this commander screen? I use Richard Expertise Primary and Ethel Flood Secondary. Is that worth it? No, I would split those up, Fly Gaming. I'm not sure that makes sense. Yo, Chis, should I invest in Esong or Richard? Um, if you're going to Expertise the Commander, I think Esong's the better pick. If you're not going to Expertise the Commander, I think Richard is a better pick. Uh, I've got some really detailed videos about that. If you look for my videos on, like, which commander should I take to 5111 and 55111, or 5511, I, I cover that pretty extensively, so take a look for those videos. Um, so, SE7, we'll just call you 7, 7 foot, um, said Constantine. So Constantine is a really interesting topic. We have talked about Constantine in other videos, but Constantine is another commander that's got a tool in your toolbox that you should maybe pull out and use with a commander like Attila and Takeda. Um, Lucho Lucero, what's going on, dude? So the thing that Constantine is doing is he reduces all damage taken by 10%. Well, guess what? Taking 10% less damage from Attila and Takeda seems really good to me. Doesn't that seem really good to you? So if Constantine is not in your garrison... Having them potentially nearby doing something to buff your garrison seems potentially very good. Um, someone mentioned Saladin. Good call out. Saladin is a really interesting commander. Um, they have a unique effect as well. Decreasing healing effects by 50%. That's a lot if they're expertise. 50% but for 5 seconds. Um... There's other things that Saladin is doing as well. There's 40% of stats here, 20% attack, 20% defense, which is a lot. Um, there's also skill damage taken reduction, which in my estimation isn't going to do anything against Attila, Takeda, really. Um, however, there is counterattack damage taken reduction, which is very good. Uh, and then, you know, this is completely worthless. So I think the idea of reducing healing effects by 50% is potentially very good. It's potentially very, very powerful. Chiskul, should I max Sun Tzu or Belisaria? Sun Tzu. Definitely go with Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is the best epic in Rise of Kingdoms slam dunk. It's so versatile. It's so good. There are better team player epics, but it's a very good one. Um... Someone is saying Saladin Takeda as Garrison can break the Attila Takeda combo. So um, that also brings up something very interesting. Should you fight fire with fire? Remember, Attila and Takeda are known for being rally leaders. Could they work in a Garrison capacity? Is the best counter to an Attila Takeda rally? an Attila Takeda defense, I would make the argument that if the answer to that question is yes, then Attila and Takeda are, like, broken. That's very strange. Like, the best offensive combo should not be also the best defensive combo. But what if one of those commanders that is very good on offense also happens to be very good on defense? Again, then we enter into the realm of, like, maybe that is a little broken and we should evaluate it. Um, however... Let's get a look at Takeda. Would they work in a garrison capacity? The active skill works if you're in a garrison against a single rally. The second skill gives you 40% cavalry attack. Well, that certainly works in a garrison, even though the second half of it is march speed. You don't care about that. The next skill, uh, defense bonus and healing factor. Well, that works in a garrison. Uh, it doesn't say here that it has to be in the open field. And this over here, skill damage, 
against Takeda is reduced. When taking chan uh, damage, there's a chance to reduce normal attack. Well, see, that actually will be very good against Attila and Takeda. Reducing normal attack and reducing counterattack damage. That actually is very strong, as it turns out, against Attila Takeda, who does normal attack and counterattack damage. So, the expertise skill also works in a garrison. So, could this be good in a garrison? I would say, if you're going to use cavalry, like, yeah, Takeda could be good in a garrison. Lucho Luchero with the ARS 50 donation. What's more exciting to you, winning your first KVK or trying the new KVK map? Um... If you say winning your first KVK, as in, like, if it was season one, I mean, like, winning your first season one KVK has got to be cool. It's got to be really cool. I wouldn't know about that, but it's got to be cool. Um, I would, I mean, like, I don't know. We can't actually choose between these things, right? But if you're saying, like, would I rather win my current KVK with the old map or try the new KVK? I mean, I don't know. The winning part of KVK is feels pretty important to me. So I'm pretty happy with how it all went. The rewards suck for season one. Uh, yeah, like the season one commander is pretty inconsequential. The season two commander is extremely consequential. And the season three reward, well, we'll figure that out. Um, we're more than still 100 days away. Gosh darn it, we have 100 freaking days. We're still 100 days away from making Skolas' lucky coin. 100 Gosh darn it. What are some good tanky pairings for Esong? I mean, I used Richard Esong, which, like, is very strange, but nobody targeted it. You could also use Charles Martel in Esong. That actually is pretty legit. How's my Guan looking? My Guan is level 41. Uh, I am taking this commander to six stars. Uh, I will make them a primary, and I will likely use them with Alex doing a Guan Alex pairing in the Sunset Canyon. That's my intention. Is that coffee or whiskey, as it turns out from this Chiskool Gaming mug, shameless self-promotion, link in the description if you want your own merch in the Chiskool Gaming mug. Um, this is a tea. It's a chai tea. Uh, by the way, we're going to do a giveaway for this mug, courtesy of The Last Spartan, when we hit 50,000 subs. To be determined how we're going to do that giveaway exactly, but we are going to do that. Constantine is great for rage. I agree. The support tree is amazing for rage. Uh, and also, uh, Diego saying Guan is amazing. Uh, I agree. I agree Guan is amazing. All right, so um, Exernex says, I have a report where Guan Leo beat Attila Takeda. You know what wouldn't surprise me? You know what wouldn't surprise me one bit? Is if the new infantry commanders beat the current meta cavalry commanders. That would not... <coughs> oh my gosh. That would not surprise me one bit. That would not surprise me one bit. Okay. So, what other unique effects do we have, fam, that we should get looking at? What should we go look at that is a unique effect that the commander has that could be used to counter Attila Takeda? What do you think? What do you think? What about Pelagius Takeda versus Attila Takeda? Um, I don't think Pelagius is the trick. Uh, Pelagius is epic, which could be fine. And he is a garrison commander, which is good. Um, however... I don't think that the damage factor here is enough to offset the fact that he does have a lot of really good things. Uh, the Rage Restoration is good. The 30% of Cavalry stats is good, but that also includes his Expertise skill. Um, the Garrison 7% attack is like fine, but you could do better on a Legendary. The healing is fine. It is actually very good. It, it's better than usual, this amount of healing, but it's not good enough in my estimation. All right, I had to blow my nose. Hold on. All right, we're back. 
we're back. So I don't think Pelagius is your answer. I don't think Pelagius is your answer. How about Alex and Ethelfled? I don't like Alex and Ethelfled particularly because Alex wants full infantry. So I, I don't... I, I see what you're getting at to apply a shield, apply the debuff to use Ethelfled's debuff. I don't know. I never tested it. I guess that could be okay. Martel Constantine against Attila Takeda. Um, in our testing, we found that Constantine primary with Richard secondary was better than Constantine primary with Martel secondary. Uh, it could be that Martel is better uh, in a real world situation, but in our past level one testing, we, we found otherwise. Um, by the way, when I talk about past level one testing, do y'all know what I mean? Do y'all know what I mean? Past level one testing. Let me just show you. Let me just show you um, where we do this. Let me just show you back in the old K75. Ooh, Constantine Leonidas. That's an interesting idea. Constantine Leonidas is a counter to Attila Takeda. That's an interesting idea. So, let's see here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this was the pass where we did our testing. We maybe deleted some flags. Yeah, this was this was it. So, <clears throat> here is a level one pass. At a level one pass, no troops die. If we hit the info button, um, does it say? It doesn't say. I'm sure. I thought it did somewhere. I thought it did somewhere. Anyways, this is a level one pass. So we have some number of players on one side, some number of players on the other side, and we take turns kind of rallying it and defending the pass. And then we look at the report to see what it looks like because a pass qualifies as a garrison. Uh, so when I talk about level one pass testing, this is what we're referring to. Uh, we actually use one of Wolf's forts to typically be here. So like I think the fort was over here or maybe like write it down here. Um, so that like we could teleport over and then people teleport over here and they join rig and then we sort of battle a bit over here figuring out like what's actually better. Does that make sense? So I heard a mention here of Constantine Leonidas. And by the way, like if your kingdom is not making an effort to set up past level one testing, um, then your kingdom is not taking uh, the loss of troops seriously. And you need to seriously, you need to really evaluate, like, is that a, a kingdom that I really want to continue to be in? Um, you know, there's, there's certainly a couple lessons that came out of this KVK. Um, and I, I can share with you what some of those were for me. Um, one of them is that you really must have your, um, top tier meta commanders going to players that will use them. And gosh, um, you know, I heard from one of the other kingdoms in this KVK that, like, somebody had, like, beat the heck out of their own farm to win Attila Takeda and get 180 sculptures. And, like, that kingdom never had Attila Takeda show up once in this KVK as a rally lead. And so, like, you really do need the top-end players of your kingdom who are loyal to your kingdom to be winning the Mighty Governor. Uh, that's very important uh, for the health of your kingdom and its ability to wage war in KVK. I mean, this KVK was a true testament to that. So um, that's a piece of the puzzle. It's why in Kingdom 75, we have a rule that like if you are, you know, battling your own farm, like there's a non-zero chance that we will just zero you if you're battling your farm to get KE points. Like that just doesn't fly in this kingdom. Uh, the other thing we do is when we're outside of KVK, we constrain the amount of kill event points. So basically your biggest spenders go and they win. Um, and the thing is that, like, okay, your biggest spenders are winning uh, KVK or uh, Mighty Governor. But the thing is, they're also the ones that should be leading these rallies like 24-7 in KVK. So, like, I don't know. Um, 
it's I think it's good for the health of the kingdom if you can figure that. And I can tell you from the experience of this KVK that at least one kingdom was really feeling the pain of not having a whale with Attila Takeda maxed out. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, let's get to the Leonidas because that I thought was really interesting. Constantine with Leonidas. That's an interesting idea. Um, active skill uh, increases health by 30%. Okay, health boost of 30% is good. Health boost of uh, 30% is good. Um, deals a direct damage factor of 600 is really low. And Attila and Takeda are reducing the amount of damage factor that you're taking. So that's not as exciting. However, targets under the effect of silence or attack reduction take 50% extra damage. So a direct damage factor, I think, of 900 is what that would actually look like. What I will say is that Constantine's active skill is reducing the attack of the target. So that actually is pretty good. So, okay, you have my attention, Leonidas. Um, 900 damage factor and 40% health, or 30% or health. Okay, interesting. Um, 300 Spartans. When the army led by this commander contains only infantry. Now, this is a tough one because all it takes is one person to mess up and send the wrong troop type, and you're really screwed. But let's say you could definitely have 100% infantry. The speed of rage gained of 15% with Constantine primary would just be insane. Oh my god. You would gain so much rage. You would have 100% uptime on Constantine's active skill. For sure. For sure. For sure. Um, Deathstroke is pointing out that Constantine already increases your health by a lot. This is true. This is true. We don't really know how the mechanics of these stats work. If there's diminishing returns as they... Uh, amp up, or if it's actually amplified effectiveness by going all in on health. I don't know the answer to that question. It could be very good. It could be very, very good. Don't forget, Constantine already increases your health a lot. It's true. It's very true. <clears throat> so if we look at the next skill, Honorable Sacrifice. When the army led by this commander is reduced to 50% strength, gain a shield. Um, there's a, let's see here. There's a chance to gain a shield. We don't know what that chance is, do we? Has anyone mathed out what that chance is? And it lasts for three seconds. While it lasts, the attack of your troops is increased by 15%. I mean, I think this is really good. This is really good. Um, the way that works if you're the garrison captain is that, you know, you're going to dip below 50%. Uh, Constantine's going to pop his heel. So then you're going to be above 50%. But then once you get back below 50% again, you're going to be getting constant shields, which for a prolonged fight is really, really good. I actually think this is very good. Let's continue on. When on the map, aha, this is where Leonidas starts to fall down. Um, so this is not going to apply, I expect, when Leonidas is in a garrison. This is not going to apply when Leonidas is in a garrison. Um you have a 25% chance to increase all damage dealt by his own troops by 5%, and that stacks up. So that's not going to work. That's not going to work. And the expertise skill, I really still struggle with where it's good. Um, this might pop once during a fight, but like, I don't know. Does it matter over the course of a 10-minute fight that you add, you know, 10 seconds of buffs? Not really. Not really. So I think Leonidas is doing some interesting stuff, but I don't know that he's quite... I don't know that the speed of rage gained over here is going to be enough to offset the lack of skills that are going to work here. All right, Wu Zetian plus Tamaris or Constantine Tamaris. Okay. Okay, let's get a look at that. Let's get a look at that. I feel like we're stretching, but what the heck? Wu Zetian and Tamaris. Let's pull up Tamaris. Where are you at? Tamaris. What is Tamaris doing that we care about here? Um, she's poisoning the target and doing direct damage. They take... Attila Takeda takes 20% less skill damage, so I worry about doing skill damage to them. 
Um, when attacking cities, well, this is irrelevant. Uh, when, let's see, archer attack is increased. So do you really want to put archers into your garrison against Attila Takeda? I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And here we're increasing our skill damage, but only one of these commanders does skill damage. I am not convinced Tamaris is the pick. I am not convinced Tamaris is the pick. Another person asking about Saladin Takeda. Are they nerfing Attila Takeda? I don't I don't know if they are nerfing Attila Takeda. I can tell you there are two hard counters that I know of to Attila Takeda. And possibly a third. And let's review the third possible hard counter to Attila Takeda now. I'm not convinced that this is a hard counter, or even that it's a counter at all, but somebody shared it with me and they're really insistent that it works very, very well. Um, so let's get a look at this. What they said, what they said is that when the garrison gets below 60%, they swapped to Caesar with Wu Zetian's secondary. And they said that was working very, very well, which I find shocking. Caesar, Julius Caesar, primary in a garrison with Wu Zetian secondary. So let's try to figure out what the heck is going on and if we think that's even a thing, because I'm confused. Julius Caesar, active skill, is actually very, very, very good. 20% um, attack, 20% defense, and 30% damage for five seconds. That active skill is the truth, okay? So you, you have my attention with the active skill. This is 100% useful. 100% useful against Attila Takeda. So you have my attention. Continuing on. This is why they wait until it's 60% or less. Um, Julius reduces damage taken by 10%. Okay, well, that's very good. We already talked about how damage reduction is very good as a mechanic against Attila Takeda because they're, you know, doing not just, like, skill damage. They don't do any of that. It's all normal attack damage. So, like, 10% reduction of damage taken, it, I mean, it's very good. So... They also have a 10% chance to further reduce damage taken by 30% for the next three seconds. I don't know if I'm remembering this correctly, but I'm pretty sure I did the math on this a long time ago, and that is roughly equal to a 9% damage reduction over time, okay? So the way to look at this second skill when your garrison is below, or when the army is below 60%, is to say that this second skill is a 19% damage reduction, which actually is very good. That actually is very good. Um, the next skill is completely irrelevant. The next skill is completely irrelevant. So that has me seriously questioning the validity of a Julius Caesar in this capacity. I highly doubt that that is the case. Um, and then the expertise skill is a little bit of damage. So I think that the skill... Skills are good, but not amazing. I have a hard time believing that this would just be better than like a Constantine. Um, however, 19% damage reduction is a lot. And what they said they were doing that I also found kind of hilarious is that they were using Julius Caesar with Wu Zetian and they were just dumping in siege units because they were like, we don't care about the siege units. And we're taking out your cavalry. Seems like a positive trade to me, is what they were saying. And that is interesting that like they don't actually care about the troop type. They don't actually care about the troop type. Uh, Constantine Alex, we could get a look at that, Lucho. Let's get a look at that next. Um, but let's finish looking at Julius Caesar. So now the next question I have here is, like, why a Julius Caesar primary? Why would you use a Julius Caesar primary? I, I, I find that astonishing. We know that a Wu Zetian primary is going to have a lot of garrison talents that are really good. So what talents could possibly be in here to offset the garrison talents? I'm not convinced. But what would they be? Um, Burning Blood is good if you're getting swarmed. I doubt your garrison's getting swarmed. I do think Lord of War is really exceptional 
Um, and I don't think Wu Zetian has an equivalent of this. Uh, when troops led by this commander enter battle, increase attack by 1.5% times the star level. So 6 times 1.5%, you know, you're looking at uh, like 9% of stats, which is really good. That's actually pretty good. Uh, the effortless is really, really good as well. During battle, increase all damage dealt uh, by, what is it, 1.5% uh, every 10 seconds for a maximum of 10%. That's actually really good. That's actually really, really good. And, yeah, that's quite strong. The attack tree's got some stuff, right? They, I think they said they got martial mastery as well, which I find, like, a kind of a curious choice why you would do that. Um, increase normal attack damage by 2%, but decrease active skill damage. I mean, I guess Wu Zetian is doing less active skill damage, but she is still doing some. Um, you could get fight to the death. Increase all damage taken and also all damage dealt. I don't know. I don't know. Um, again, this feels like an unlikely pair. Uh, but somebody said they were doing it and it worked really well. And so there's one possible thing that y'all should go test. Go test it. Tell me if it works. Uh, speaking of things that are happening, what's going on over here? Haha. -ha. Haha, -ha. confirm, simplify graphics. The Ancient Ruins just started. The Ancient Ruins just started. Ankit, what's going on? What's going on? All right, hold on. Got to blow my nose again real quick. All right, we're back. We are back. We got ancient ruins going on. We can get some experience over here. Maybe. Maybe. Boom. <sighs> Rocking that honor grind, baby. We're currently 30th, but we have so many action point potions. We may need to do that on stream even. Just kill a lot of barbs. Might be a thing we have to do. How do the Ancient Ruins work? Well, I'd be happy to explain that. So glad that you asked. Um, the way that Ancient Ruins work is that uh, at the start, a bunch of Stalkers spawn. You have to kill the Stalkers and be the only alliance in, the, in this area. The only alliance in this like dotted line area that you can kind of see. And if you are, you get control of the Ancient Ruins, which just happened for us. Um, during that time, you gain a bunch of individual honor. I think it's like 900-ish total during the duration of the Ancient Ruins, if you're in it the whole time. Uh, you get some experience on the commanders that are in there, uh, and you also get a lot of Alliance honor. So for every person that's in there, it's actually doing a whole heck of a lot for your kingdom. Then, periodically, every, I think, five minutes or so, stuff spawns in. And you got to fight it. And when you fight it, when you fight it, and give me just a second here, I'll pull up my mail. Let's get this set up correctly, though. Okay. So let me just open this up. There we go. So when you beat a stalker, you do get... A bunch of goodies so it doesn't cost you any action points i am getting experience for fighting these and i get some training speed ups some tomes of knowledge some gems and some resources you know not the worst not the worst here's another stalker we hit it we got some stuff and this is not much stuff right like this is, this is not much stuff <laughs> so it's not really about the stuff the experience is decent um that's kind of what we're there for all right, let me jump back to chat. Kid in the house, get used to being sick constantly, says Alex Herman. Ugh, you're probably not wrong. So what about Constantine Constantine Garrison with Alexander the Great? Um, let's look. The shielding is good. The shielding is good. 
This, however, doesn't apply. The whole of this skill, you're not getting the effect of um, being immune to damage reduction effects. You're not getting the effect of uh, all regular attacks having a chance to reduce the healing of the target. So I don't know that I love Alexander the Great and the Garrison. Um, the march speed is irrelevant and attack while on the map. See, this is not a commander that belongs in a garrison. He, he, he's cool, but he doesn't belong there. Um, how long will it take to expertise a legendary just from gold keys? Oh boy. That is a really interesting question. I'm going to put a pin in that one. And that is a really interesting topic. I'm going to write that down and revisit it at some point. How long to max a legendary from gold keys? Hmm. I have to do some investigation of that. It would take a very long time. It would take a very, very long time. How long would it take? Um, the reason that I know it takes a very long time is that we have put zero universal sculptures into Julius Caesar. And here's where we are with him. 5533, three, three, okay? We're like halfway to expertising this commander. And we've been playing this game dutifully, daily, since 489 days ago. So if you're doing this like purely with gold keys, that is going to be a lot of gold keys. <laughs> that is going to be a lot of gold keys. Just throwing that out there. That is a high number of gold keys. Um, let's do this. It looked like somebody was rallying a fort. I'm going to send my currency gaining one troop builder back to my city. We're going to go join a rally. Um, let's see. I can't read that. Constantine Genghis is OP with all cavalry. That doesn't make any sense. Wait. Constantine Genghis? What? Constantine Genghis? All cavalry? Who's the primary? Khan or, or is it Constantine? All right, fam. So what other tools are in the toolbox? What other tools are in the toolbox for countering Attila Takeda? What else do we have? What else do we have? What else can we do? This is a clinic. I could just tell you the answers, but like y'all tell me. Wouldn't be a, well, what's the point of live streaming if it's not a little interactive? What else you got? Special effects we could use. Ooh, hold the phone. We got two rallies we need to join now. Let's uh, send these guys back. Back from the gold node. Come on home. Diego Guzman Fernandez, $10 super chat. Thank you for that donation. I really appreciate it. In terms of open field speed, which are top three presets? Oh, and the 10 bucks are Baby Chiskul's college fund. All right. Well, Chiskul Mini thanks you for that donation to their college fund. Let me join this rally real quick and then answer your question. Here we go. Rally. There it is. New troops. Preset. This is a fine one. We're going to have to fix that preset. Let's do that real quick. Boom, confirm, march. Ah, oh, rally army capacity reached. No. I knew it. All right, hold on. Let's do this. How about now? We, we got there. We're in the rally. We're in the rally. Okay. In terms of open, speed, open field speed, which are the top three presets? All right, all right, all right. So what I do for open field speed is, and this is the fastest in the game, the literal fastest in the game. Last I checked. Hmm. I got to think about this. Uh, Cao Cao primary with this talent build. Cao Cao primary with this talent build. All cavalry. And then what I've been using as the secondary is Khan. Because Khan is giving 15% march speed when he's not in combat. However, I believe Attila also gives... 15% march speed. So actually, Attila 
with uh, Cao Cao primary with the mobility tree also is the fastest in the game. So those three commanders are the ones that I play around with. Of course, when I'm going speedily from place to place, I also have used Dragon Lancer with Lancelot as my kind of like derpy one troop wonder. Um, that way I'm not using commanders that I might need for something else. Uh, so hopefully that kind of answers your question there. Bada boom. Um, there's level 10 forts though, fam. Number one quality of life feature for Rise of Kingdoms. Number one quality of life feature would be a fort finder. A fort finder. Where are them forts at, yo? I don't even see a single one. How did he find a level 10 fort? There's like not even a single fort in here. Dude, Kingsland gets so crowded. Oh my god. Kingsland gets real crowded real fast. Maybe I can find a level 9. Maybe I can find a level 9 fort? Nope. Level 6 is. Level 8. I mean, level 9. Alright, fine. We'll do this. Rally. Five minutes. Boom. Oh, I got a preset for this. Oh, oh, I'm all out of Mamluks. All right, we'll use some of these. Boom. All right. There we go. There we go. And how's this looking? Ooh, we got stuff to kill. Wow, that was that was really good timing. We just slayed that timing, y'all. We just completely slayed that timing. We just completely slayed that timing. How many hours do you play a day? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. We play, I mean, during work days, we don't get to play as much, really, all that much, uh, except in the evening, uh, where maybe I get to play like an hour or two. Um, on the weekend, I get to play more. Yeah. Okay. How to counter a Tilla so, um, now let's talk about options for how you counter Attila Takeda. Um, not even in the realm of what the commanders are, but even, like, what are the things you can do? And chat, this is a clinic, you tell me. What are the things you can do to counter Attila Takeda? What are the different levers that you have to work with? All of them. Every single lever at your disposal. What are they? What are they? Not, not commanders, though. So, so we'll, I'll, I'll take that off the table. Commanders and talent builds, we've already talked about. We've already talked about civilizations. We've talked about city skin. We've talked about troop type. What are the things you actually can do with those commanders? Okay, there's one option. Michael said swarm. Swarming is one option. What are your other options for countering? For countering. Um, countering, by the way, I do not mean one for one. When I say Attila and Takeda are hard countered two ways, I'm saying that there are two ways to go two for one against Attila, Attila Takeda. Use Attila Takeda rally on your enemy. Well, so Michael's on a roll. Um, counter rallying. So swarming is one thing at your disposal that you can do with these commanders. Counter rallying is another thing you could do with these commanders. Um, run away. Actually, run away is your third option. Um, and let me explain this because I think people really fail to understand this one. Um, run away is actually a legitimate third option. Here's how that works. And maybe run away is not the right wording, but dodging is. Let's say that two flags are touching. Okay, let us let me go find two flags. Okay, let's say, and I know we're from the same kingdom, but let's say that these are two flags from opposing kingdoms and you're about to fight. Um, if you burn the enemy's flag first, then you don't have to defend your flag. And you can repair it after your flags are no longer touching for free because they can't attack it. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? One strategy that we employed was to burn their flag before they could burn ours and to keep it burning. And then we didn't have to defend ours at all. 
And if we got far enough ahead in that flag race and we could keep theirs burning, then we didn't have to defend because we could just repair it after the flags were no longer touching. That is a very valid strategy. That is an extremely valid strategy. It's not really a countering Attila Takeda thing exactly, but it works. It is a tactic you can use to avoid taking rallies. We used it a lot. Because look, our kingdom is relatively small. We're small and mighty. So when we're battling against three kingdoms, we got to play smart. And we can't take every rally. Even though we have the best garrison defenses in the game, hands down, in our kingdom. People dedicated 100% to garrison defense. And we got like half a dozen of them. Right? So, like, we have very good defense. Even with that, we didn't want to take those trades on defense if we could avoid it. Seriously. So, um, yeah, as much as possible, we just dodged. We just straight dodged. Um, We try to burn them first. We try to burn them when they weren't paying attention to somewhere. Eh, Four minutes. That makes me kind of a jackass if I join that rally. Because I'm going to hold up the rally. Don't do that. Oh, jeez. I mean, <laughs> oh, God. Someone's already reinforcing this from five minutes away. Well, I'll get there faster than that, so I guess I can join it. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right. Fine. I'll join it. I'll join it. Minimum skill Genghis Khan. Uh, I would take Khan to 5511. I would take Khan to 5511. So anyways, like our kingdom like tried to actually not take rallies as much as possible. And instead of defending, we would just go full offense um, where we could. Which made sense because we had Attila Takeda, right? So when you think about what am I going to do with commanders that would counter Attila Takeda, um, the answer is you're either going to counter rally with them you're going to swarm with them, or you're going to captain the garrison with them. Those are your three options, okay? So when you're evaluating what are the tools in the toolkit with these different commanders, one way that you need to be evaluating it is in the context of would I counter rally with that? Would I swarm with that? Or would I use that as a garrison captain? Does that help? Does that help? Um, over the course of this video... Over the course of this video, and all of the commanders that we've talked about, and and like, look, we've talked about pretty much every commander that's here, so maybe that's not the most fair, but but we've pretty much, in our evaluation of commanders, already covered, well, we've already covered, like, all of the commanders that are involved in countering Attila Takeda. Um, We've given you literally all the levers as well in which you could consider using those commanders. Um, And we've even given you one suggested pair that we're being told is very good, but I I like haven't seen enough proof. I haven't seen enough proof to to say definitively like, yeah, that works. So, um, you know, look, like I know people are really upset about Attila Takeda and... um, my saying that there are ways to deal with it and, and that are that are trade very positively, um, I know like stings to have thought like, gosh darn it, I was taking rallies that like I could have done really well in. Um, but I think like th- if you can get into this mindset, okay, I'm serious. If you can get into this mindset of if it's in the game, there's probably a way to deal with it. Okay, if it's in the game, there's probably a way to deal with it. If and only if you have exhausted every option because you've been testing and there's still nothing working, like maybe it's broken. And like, look, I can't tell you if Attila and Zakeda are coded correctly, okay? Like, I can't tell you that. So like, if there's a problem with how they were coded, then yes, they're broken, okay? Like, assuming that they were coded correctly, okay, assuming that they were coded correctly, right? Like, what are the levels of levers available to you to counter Attila Takeda and like use them? Um, rename commanders, please, for those who just got here. Um, I can summarize for those who just got here. 
I mean, we talked kind of about every commander. Like, the only commander we didn't talk about is Hannibal Barca. And, like, for what it's worth, I haven't seen him be a part of a counter to Attila Takeda. Um, your levers are, to summarize, um, commander and build. You look for unique effects. Effects that we talk about include rage gem, include stat gain and reduction, include disarm and silence. It includes rage reduction of the target. Um, it includes, what else did we talk about? Um, attack damage taken reduction, shields, uh, you know, buffs and buffs in general. Um, oh yeah, healing effect reduction is a big one. We talked about that. Um, you look for commanders that have those things and like the levers you have are using them as the garrison, using them in a counter rally, uh, using them in a swarm. Constantine El Cid, interesting idea. Chiskul, tell the guy who is spamming since 30 minutes, Edward, as a counter, that he wouldn't be the answer. He doesn't believe me. Edward is not one of the answers I have seen. Edward is not one of the answers I have seen. Kingdom titles to the to the attack, the rally. Yes, kingdom titles definitely should be involved. Um, those are some of the other levers that we talked about. Kingdom title, city skin, uh, captain, you know, commander bonuses over here. Uh, you know, we talked about how you got to get a token, how you got to get uh, a rune, how, what else? You got to pick your civilization, all that kind of stuff. There's gear, but like you just put your best gear on, the, you know, whatever you're using, of course. Uh, Thammer says, will there be new epic commanders? I sure hope so. I sure hope there will be more epic commanders. I hope those epic commanders have effects similar to what we see on legendary commanders. For instance, I would love to see uh, like a circle AoE on an epic commander. I think that would be super cool. I think that would be super cool if there was a circle AoE on an epic commander. Um, yeah. What else would I would I like to see on an epic commander? I would like to see big healing on an epic commander. That doesn't exist today. Richard Mini. I think that would be really cool. Um, gosh, healing effect reduction on an epic commander would be cool. That would be super cool. Uh, ooh, silences on an epic commander would be super cool. Silences would be super cool. Oh, we didn't talk about Guan. Although silence doesn't work because Attila Takeda is immune to silence. Right. Right, right, right. We talked about that. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. Speed of Rage Gain. Man, Speed of Rage Gain would be cool on an Epic Commander. I don't know. I have a really hard time believing that this Commander is good at all in combat, but yeah, we'll see. Ooh, Fort getting rallied. Nailed it. Nice. What else we got going on over here? Nine rally, ten rally. All right. Um, we can go find another level nine. I feel like this is the area to look for forts. It's because, like, this zone is kind of like our zone. I got a level eight. I could do better than a level eight, right? I don't know. We got so much honor grinding to do. It's pretty nuts. It is pretty nuts. Here we go. Some more Mamluks. Boom, boom. Boom. What about Ethelflaed Kusunoki? Um, no. I don't think Ethelflaed Kusunoki would be... The, you, I don't even know how you'd use them. The Swarm? Garrison? I don't know. Esong will lose value if they do a Circle AOE on an Epic. They will never do that. I mean, that's sort of true, but it's sort of not true. I mean, like... Let me think about that. Would it diminish... I mean, it would diminish his uniqueness, but he still does so much damage. You could even create a world in which you'd want to use those two commanders together and they'd be very good. I mean, I'm okay with it. I am super okay with it. Right? Like, Esong will still be the jam at the legendary tier. Like, he will still be the jam. If they made an epic that did the same thing, I would be cool with it. I would be 
100% okay with that at this point. I mean, Esong's been around for like over a year. So I'm okay with that. Constantine Ulji. I don't think Ulji is the pick. An epic, I mean, like you're talking about the best legendary pair for rallying in the game. Um, an epic commander is just not likely to be the jam. Um, I mean, where are you at, Ulji? There you are. You reduce the defense to the target by 30%, but like otherwise, you're just not doing enough here to the target. You're like really just not doing enough. So I don't think Ulji is the pick. Unfortunately. Um, the reason we look at Kusunoki at all is because he's got that unique effect that scales beyond his own capability. And maybe that's something we should talk about in this clinic. The sorts of abilities that are disproportionately good are the ones that scale with the effectiveness of the enemy. You know what doesn't scale with the effectiveness of the enemy is your damage factor. That scales with the effectiveness of your own troops. What scales with the effectiveness of the enemy is silence, disarm, healing effect reduction, um, clearing negative effects, which Kusunoki does, which is why we're looking at him at all, generating rage. That scales with the effectiveness of the enemy, and generating rage scales with the effectiveness of your own troops. See what I mean? Um, so those sorts of effects tend to have more longevity in this sort of a game uh, because they scale with whatever else is happening. Takeda Belisarius? No. Oh, my God. Constantine on the infantry. Constantine with it. Dude. Constantine El Cid. Constantine's very good. Constantine is very good. El Cid is very good. Constantine Martel for defense against Ethel Alex counter rally. Cleopatra has an AoE heal and defense, which is rarely used. All right. So, um, I don't think that Cleopatra is going to be your, your saving grace. Constantine Khan. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Too much of what Constantine is doing cares about infantry specifically. I mean, 40% of stats, basically. Constantine Osman? I mean, I think Osman's cool, but you're better off with Freddy if you're using Osman at all. You may as well just use Freddy. At this point, half of the people probably troll. <laughs> So, I think we missed the boss fight. Did we miss the boss fight? We did. We missed the boss fight with the presence. Hopefully we didn't miss anything too good. Um, you can see here I just got experience and honor. Uh, the boss fights kind of matter because you really want to get this one pattern if you can. Let me pull this up. There's a weapon. It is this one over here. Heart of the Saint. Um, it's from Ancient Ruins and the Altar of Darkness. Ancient Ruins and Altar of Darkness, okay? And, ooh, level 10 barb for it. Hold the phone. Oh, baby. Talk 40 to me. Here we go. Boom. Uh, eh, we don't need them. Two minutes. Let's get in on this rally. Oh, yeah. Kiss me, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. So um, I was talking about how this is only available in KVK. Um, it gives 8% cavalry defense, which is a lot. 4% uh, infantry health, 6% archer health. Where is this good? If you have overtrained on cavalry and you're defending like your city, then Heart of the Saint is fantastic. Um, it's got, let's see here, 18% of stats. That is not as good as Trial of the Lost Kingdom, which is 20% of stats. So in order to use this particular weapon, you would likely need to get the special talent, um, which is pretty tough, assuming you aren't buying this over here. 
Alternatively, alternatively, uh, if you do get the special talent on this one, it is better than the Trial of the Lost Kingdom, which is pretty amazing. So this is an interesting one to create. Um, the other thing I'll say about this is that it is a very good archer weapon. Um, it's not so much a good cavalry weapon, right? Like if you're going cavalry, you just use this, and already you have 9% of stats, and you can like, you're much more likely to get the special talent over here. Um, so this is really good if you're going to like actually be using lots of different troop types, or I suppose if you're going all in on archers. Now, if you are going all in on archers, the golden age is just better, and that's available to you from just going and winning your Sunset Canyon or losing Sunset Canyon repeatedly. Um, let's see here. Do we have do we have more over here just yet? Not yet, but soon, right? Yeah, 11 seconds. More stalkers. Spartan says, my bones are saved for the coin. Me too. A hundred days, man. I got a hundred more days of collecting stuff. Gross. All right, let's go battle this guy. I think I battled it. There we go. There we go. We got there. We got there. What emulator do I use? Well, I use my iPad and it just crashed. So, GG. GG. Uh, dude, join Team Bundles. Team Bundles? Oh my god. Ugh. That'd be so expensive. That would be so expensive. Tyler Temple says, love this game. I have a fun time with this game too. Your iPad seems to crash a lot. You know, it's an iPad Pro. It is maybe two years old at this point. So it might be time for a new one, but I don't know. I don't know. Like yay yay, $10 super chat. Hey, this is a cool stream for season one KVK. What is the best flag defense pair? Among other commanders, I have expertise Richard, will have expertise Yisong, and I have a 5533 Martel. Okay, so you're going to want to use your expertise commanders. And I would recommend to you, in this case, that you're going to use your Richard and Esau because they're expertise. Um, if your Martel was expertise, you would probably want to go the realm of using, for instance, all infantry with a Richard and a Martel. Um, with that said, what you're likely to do is to use Richard as the primary and Esau as the secondary and have people bring all infantry. That's likely to be my recommendation to you. Um, let me see here. Should I be hitting something? Probably. Uh, uh, no, it worked out. So, you know, season one, your options are pretty limited. There's really only three legendary commanders. Um, you've got Esong, you've got Richard, and you've got Charles. You're going to want to use legendaries for sure. Um, what will people be attacking you with is an interesting question. People might be attacking with... Freddy and Esong. Um, where's Esong? Yeah, up here. Freddy Esong is a pretty legit pair to rally with, I'm told, uh, in season one of KVK. So you kind of got to be on the lookout for that because their archers are going to counter your infantry. Um, they're probably going to be rallying with cavalry. The, you know, you'll see some Minamoto Tsao rallies. That seems really likely to me. Um, if they're doing that, then your infantry defense is going to be really, really good. Like, really good. Um, you're probably going to see some, like, Barca rallies. You might see Barca Esong. You might see Barca Minamoto. Those are rallies that I actually led in Season 1 of my KVK. Um, you can definitely check out my old footage to watch all that craziness in action. Um, it was a pretty good time, not going to lie. Season 1 of KVK was insane. Uh, this is back when people could migrate endlessly during KVK, which I think was horrible. That's been fixed subsequently, which I think is a really smart choice. We need to go join more rallies. Wow, level 10 barb fort. Yeah, no way I can get into that. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Julius Caesar. You probably will see a lot of Julius Caesar in season one of KVK. Julius Caesar, I'm not as impressed by in like a season one of KVK. Um, 
I don't know. I feel like that just did not do as well as other things. Uh, Honey Badger rocking a level 10. Uh, six minutes and 32 seconds away. Gross. I really should not join that six minutes and 32 seconds away. Um, I could watch and see how far other people join from, but you really shouldn't join that. The reason is that if this rally doesn't launch on time, there's a very high likelihood that some other alliance will have rallied that same fort and taken it out. So I would not, I would not do that. Alpine says, finally a live stream. We're finally here. Tell me about value of Takeda for infantry players. I mean, if you're infantry, you don't want to use Takeda. He's a cavalry player. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're an infantry player, I would not be rocking cavalry. And, like, frankly, I don't know. That sentiment of, like, I'm an infantry player, I'm a cavalry player, I, I think the focus is really good. I think the focus is really good and that a kingdom does need to kind of focus on one set of commanders or another with each of their players because it's very hard in, like, a really advanced kingdom. Like, like we've got a very competitive kingdom, okay? If I go to Lost Canyon, right, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve out of twenty of the top players at this moment in Sunset Canyon or Lost Canyon are from our kingdom, right? And that just is an indicator to you of the intensity of our development of our commanders. Um you know, there's, there's like seven other kingdoms, and we own 12 of the top 20 spots at this moment in uh, Lost Canyon, right? So like in a kingdom like this where it's very competitive to get good commanders, I don't know. Um, you kind of need to focus. You do kind of need to focus. I defeated Solo full seven... Powers tier two armies with Mina five five zero one setup. I don't know how that works. Uh, how to counter Max Richard and Martel in the open field? Very interesting question. Okay, Richard and Martel have healing effects, and they're infantry. So you generally might be looking at archers. I really like Edward with Esong as a pair. Uh, I like Edward and Tamaris. Jesus, that is insane. 12 out of 12 are from one kingdom and one alliance. Wait, I don't think we own the top 12. There's a couple others in there. But like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of the top 10, okay, are from our kingdom. And then I think I said it was 12 out of 20. 12, 13, 14, 15... 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So 22 out of the top 50. 22 out of the top 50 are from our kingdom, right? So like more than two-fifths are from our kingdom, and there's eight total kingdoms. So like our, our investment in commanders is pretty intense, all right, what do we got here? Ooh, level 10 barb fort. Hello. Are my commanders in the city? Uh, no, they're not. All right, I need another pair. Doesn't matter who it is. Sure, Boudicca's a peacekeeper. And Saladin has some march speed. No, Attila's got more. And do we have any Mamluks? Eh, sure. Boom. We're probably too slow. Yep, we were way too slow. We were way too slow. We may be able to still join, like, the tail end of it. I don't know. Let's just put a peacekeeper in. All that dawdling did not work out for us. Join. Yeah, rally. So we were way too slow for that. Way too slow. This is why you got to have the presets. All right, let's launch a rally ourselves. Let's go find a level 9. Something maybe over here. We got a level 9 over here. We got a level 8. 
Level seven, level eight. What do we got? Eight. Oh, I really want a barb fort finder. This this is the thing that we need in life. All right, we got all eights over here. I don't want to deal with that. Why even bother setting up a second commander? Uh, for the march speed. I probably should have just hit send, though. I probably should have just sent it and called it a day. Do we have any forts over here? Uh, level eight? Yeah, I mean, sure. We'll see if people even join this. TBH. I don't know. Boom. We have a training event right now. Um, let's see here. We do have a training day event. We were in second. It looks like we've been bumped out. That's fine. Um, I trained a bunch of T4 cavalry because we are going to be battling a lot of barbs coming up. I would much rather focus on a Mighty Governor event, but we really needed to retrain our cavalry pretty desperately. So we are in a much better place with our cavalry. Oh, hold on. I'm getting attacked over here. What do we got? Well, I'm tanking. Well, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to get a little beat up over here. And we're going to have a new boss. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a boss at the next interval. I could be wrong. Maybe we missed the last boss. I don't know. I don't know. There we go. Boss down. We'll go over here. Battle this. Is Guan good to invest? Yeah, I think Guan's going to be a good investment. I have a pretty... I feel pretty positive that Guan is going to be a good investment. Guan may replace my Sun Tzu and Sunset Canyon for perspective. Do you think equipment have a great effect on the game? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think equipment has a really good effect on the game. I think... Equipment did kind of exactly what it needed to do, which is that it elevated the baseline power of just about everybody, right? Like if you look at equipment, okay, if you look at equipment, and let me just heal some troops here and check our rallies over here. All right. If you look at equipment, you get like 99% of the value from like green and blue gear. For instance, like this piece of gear gives... 2% cavalry health and 2% infantry defense. Well, guess what? I have the special talent on this, so it's like 3%, okay? Here, I mean, this is blue. 3%, if you have the special talent, it's 4%, okay? So you could go make an epic that has 4%, or you could just, like, craft and destroy this a couple times. You probably get the 4% that you would have got over here. So, like, yeah, it's a little bit better, but not much better. And, and I think that's a good thing, right? Like, you can get, like, a little bit of edge, like a little bit of edge, get into a legendary tier, but not a ton of edge. And I'm good with that, right? Like gear does give you an advantage, but not a huge advantage. This is why I'm really all in on the lucky coin because the lucky coin is going in a slot that doesn't actually have anything right now. Um, there's there's really like, I guess at the maybe you could get the silent trial over a long period of time battling the new barb fort weirdness craziness system um, which i haven't even had a chance to explore this kvk yet um but the lucky coin is really compelling because it's the only thing in this slot that is just universally good and is a million times better than like anything else that could be in this slot right like here if i go to this legendary the milky way if I don't get the special talent, then I'm getting what? Here I'm getting 4% of cavalry stats because it's 3% plus special talent is 4%. So I'm getting 2% more cavalry stats for a legendary. Like, yeah, it's good, but it's not backbreakingly good. See what I mean? But the thing I like about the coin is that there's nothing else there at like the green tier or the blue tier where I'm like, yeah, this is like... Mm. You know, that would have been easy to craft, and then you get an incremental gain. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think this is good. Silent Trial could be good, but we don't know what the, the chance is for this. It might be busted. It might be busted good. We don't know. We don't know. Um, in, incoming normal attack damage. 
by 3% and deep incoming counterattack damage by minus 10%. I mean, this is not very... I don't know what this is here for. Um, this does nothing. This does nothing. This does nothing. So, anyways. Um, I really like the way they did gear. <clears throat> I, re <clears throat> I really like the way they did gear. I think it's very fair to free-to-play players. I think it gives your top-end players something to strive for. I think it's great. Brandon Peterson in the chat. <clears throat> Man, I'm going to lose my voice, which is kind of surprising. All right. We got to watch this now. We got to watch this like a hawk. Don't let me forget this, chat. But I think there might be a boss coming. I would like to get that weapon pattern if it drops. We got to watch this. Hulk, what's going on, dude? Good to see you, man. How you doing? Ah. <sighs> Nothing like a Sunday morning or evening, depending on where you are. Playing Rise of Kingdoms, slaying some stalkers, killing some forts. You know, the usual drill, baby. The usual drill. Hi from Indonesia. Is that water or is it vodka? I mean, it's water. <laughs> it's water. It also looks really funny with the green screen, I think. Hold on, let me try this. Does it? How does that work? Can you even tell the glasses there? Yeah, sort of. It like sort of disappears. Is Khan good with Freddy? Yeah, Khan Freddy's good. Papa John's and Chiss is how I roll. Lol. Oh, man. I started, let's see here. Hold on. I got to show this comment. I started as Britain Boudicca. Three to five days ago, reached City Hall 10, swapped to China. Now I'm thinking to change to Korea when I reach City Hall 16. Only if you're going to spend a ton of speed-ups on research should you switch to Korea. A ton. I think you should I think you should not switch from China till you have way more of your buildings built. Way more. Like, City Hall 16 is way too soon to switch to Korea, in my opinion, Michael. Brandon Peterson. My bank thought Chiskul channel membership was a suspicious charge because of the max call of the ancients is normal. Oh, my God. Ugh. Should I burn all my AP in part one of the Eve of the Crusade? I need experience on all my commanders. Hmm. Should I burn all my AP? Hold on. I think there's a fort I got to join. There is. Quickly. Join the fort. Join the fort. Oh, God. Go, go, go. What about the other fort? Is there another one? Ooh. Can I get there? Can I get there? Peacekeeper. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, action points. Give me a break. Capacity reached. I knew it. Duh. Too slow. I need to change one of my presets. So I stopped doing that. Hey, Chiskul. How are you, bro? I'm great, bro. Which civilization do you highly recommend free to play? Check out my civilizations video. I go way in depth on civilizations. Like super in depth. Definitely worth a view. All right. Claim our goodies. Claim our mails. Nice. All right. Who will get the zig in your lost kingdom? Um, so King, our allies, 42, are going to get the zig uh, capture bonus. They're going to get the twilight bonus. Um, and we're going to get it at the end for the end of KVK rewards. That's the plan. Um, yeah. Which Civ is good for Guan? Rome is probably the best. Rome is probably the best civilization for Guan. All right, hold on. Chat, remember I got to watch this. I got to watch this like a hawk. 95 seconds, y'all. We got like a minute. We got a minute more watching this. Is Khan or Cao Cao Max better? I think Khan is better. But Cao Cao is more universally usable. Sort of. Like Cao Cao is a barb killer. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, asked an AP question. Hold on. I got to focus. I got to focus. So, 
if you need experience on your commanders and you're going to fight with those commanders, you could go totally ham with your AP in stage two of Crusader Fort building. And I did that personally. The downside is the honor gain is very low compared to other zones. So like right now I get like 10 honor a barb, whereas in zone two, or I guess it's zone four stage two, you're getting like five honor a barb. So that's a problem. Um, but the rewards are really good. So I think it's worth going ham in stage two just to get your Crusader Fort built. And um, if you need the experience too, that seems really good to me. So if you need the experience, I would go for it. That all seems fine. Um, if you think you're going to win KVK and you don't need to go ham in order to win KVK, then I would go ham later if what you're trying to do is actually win the honor game for the skin. Does that make sense? Oh, there it is. We have a boss. All right. So, is there going to be this weapon that I've, like, ne basically never seen drop a single time? And if there is, are we going to get it? I don't know. It seems really unlikely. It seems really unlikely to me. But here we are. And there's a bunch of other people that would probably pick it up you know, it would be closer to it than I would. All right, there we go. Uh, I don't know. Let's just start walking to something. That's not it. That's not it. Ooh, what's this? That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. It's not the legendary star. Ooh, what about that? Nope, it's not that one. See, I don't think it dropped. There's a lot of stuff. We didn't even see it. I don't think it dropped. What am I even picking up? Oh, God. I don't need that. Um, but what I did there is I just, like, went and blindly picked up, like, the first epic that I saw, hoping that it might be it. Uh, and, you know, it isn't, as it turns out. But, uh, you know, if it had been, at least I would have been on my way to it. Because it's slower to, like, tap it and see what it is, and then, oh, that's it, and then drag your unit over. It's much faster to just drag your unit over and then see what it is afterwards. All right, well, um, by the way, using that strategy, using that exact strategy I just described is how we picked up this pattern over here, uh, the Sacred Grips. We picked up this pattern at the Lost Temple Battling Guardians, and, you know, you got to kill a Temple Guardians. We, we battled those Temple Guardians so many times to finally get this pattern. And then they're like, aha, Skolas is lucky coin. And I was like, well, GG, I guess I'm not making sacred grips anytime soon. I was on my way toward making this. And now I'm not. Because instead I'm making the coin. Instead I am making the coin. All right, we got a level 10 fort here. Hello. Get in on the action. Get in on the action. Go, go, go. We'll go to Honey Badger City. We got a level 9 for it. What the heck? We'll get in on that action. And we're going to change one of our presets. Let's change our preset to Boudica. And the secondary can be Attila. Dude, it's fast. And I guess, I guess we go with the T5s. We're really reaching here. Uh, we'll make that preset number 5. Sure. Confirm. Send. All right. Nice. Nice. All right. So we got to hang out at these ruins for a little bit longer because we need the honor. But we didn't get the drop we were hoping for. And, like, in fairness, we almost never will. Uh, Khan or Saladin? Saladin is more tanky and versatile. Khan is more glass cannon DPS. So there's your choice. Do you want a tanky, versatile commander? Saladin, do you want a glass cannon DPS? Go con. Oh my gosh, the last Spartan, I agree with you completely. The thing he dislikes the most about Rise of Kingdoms is their RNG drops off open world mobs. Yeah, man, I would 100x prefer, I would 100x prefer if 
I got a mail that showed me what my rewards were for hitting it rather than like dropping these presents on the ground. Oh my God. Present drops are so stressful. They're so stressful. What is the barbarian camp? Okay, so I can show that. Barbarian camps are something that we've not had an opportunity to do. They live wherever you see. Ooh, there's a barbarian camp here. Uh, well, well, I guess we could do this. <laughs> I guess we could do this. About eight hours. We'll make his return after the cooldown. Eight hours before he shows up? Gross. Well, there is a barbarian camp here. I don't know. I guess we could send a bunch of marches over here and do it. Deathstroke says, don't do it. The boss is killed. It's too late. All right. So I should set a timer for eight hours and come back then? Is that how I should do that? Is that how that works? What else do we got? We got any of those over here? Any of those in our starting area? I don't know. Uh, ooh, yeah. There's one. What do we got? Less than one hour. Should I be going here? Should I be here? Is this where I should be? You tell me. Is this where I should be in one hour? Yes. Should I be bringing lots of marches here? That's where I should go? So what should I bring? I've never done one of these. That could be any time frame. What does any time frame mean? It says less than an hour. That should be soon, right? Shouldn't that be soon? Should I clear this and bring like, I don't know, Minamoto and somebody? Like, I don't know, Pelagius? And bring a bunch of cavalry? 47 minutes. Could be five minutes, could be 30 minutes. Well, I'm pretty far away, huh? And I could bring, I don't know, who else? Cao Cao? How many marches do I need to beat this? How many marches do I need? Cao Cao and Takeda? That's a combo. Uh, I guess <laughs> Attila Takeda could be. Does this take action points? I'm bringing peacekeepers, but does it even take action points? Is that a thing I need to worry about? Is that a thing? No AP. No action points. So I could bring archers. I could bring archers. That would be easy. How many commanders do I need to beat it? One march? Just one march? I kill that with one march? Can I really do that with one march? Legit one march? Of T5. Okay. Because this is a pretty not legit one march. That's closer. I could use my Lohar. That's a not legit one march. I don't even know where it is anymore. Here. I'm <laughs> even if I get this derpy amulet, okay? When am I going to build it? <laughs> when am I even going to be able to make the Starn amulet? You can see why I don't have much of a sense of urgency about it. 
When will I even make the darn thing? Um, all right, that's going to a rally. That's going to a rally. 39 seconds over there. Time over there. Good. Claim the wood on the map. Spend uh, this over here. Boom. All right, ooh, the last Spartan just launched a rally against a level 10 fort. That seems pretty good. Can I join it? Well, let's do this. I think I'm going to send my troops down over there. I got multiple marches going there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat it. I've never done it before. I need a way to, like, zoom out on the map and see, like, which ones are coming soon, you know? I need a way to see which ones are coming soon. All right. How are we doing here? Is this almost done? 10 seconds. All right. We'll zoom out. It's over here. All right. We'll go there. I don't know what's going to happen. New mail received. Probably because we finished a fort. Ooh. Level 10 fort. Can we join it? Uh, we're probably not going to get in that one. Oh, six minutes away. That'd be rude. That would be super rude of me to join. I could join this one. Uh... Nope. So rude. All right. I'm not going to be rude. I'm not going to be rude, y'all. What I am going to do is get a rune to speed up my march speed. That seems like a pretty good choice. So we're going to jump over here. That's the one I wanted. We're going to get that. Yoink. All right. We're on our way. Let's see if there's some other ones that are available. Let's see here. All right, so how zoomed in do I need to be to see these darn things? This zoomed in? No. Wait. Where is it? Okay, that zoomed in is good. All right. Where are you at, thingies? What should we call those? What are those called? Barbarian areas? What do we got here? What do you got? Ooh, less than an hour. Less than an hour. All right. All right. I see you. All right, what else we got? Wait a minute. <gasps> Aha! There is a marker for it. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, what do we got here? I wish it showed the timer, though. I really wish it showed the timer. What do we got? We got one over here. Zoom me in. What do we got? <gasps> Less than an hour. Less than an hour. All right, all right, what else we got? Where are you at? Strongholds, where are you at? What do we got over here? Oh, Primal's already doing it. Well, let's watch. All right. Holy jeez, he's doing it. Get it. All right, what'd you get? Where's the loot? Wait, I'm confused. Somebody help me out here. Where's the loot? Where's the loot? I thought I dropped on the ground. Chat, what's the word? Where's the loot? <laughs> loot is in a report? Son of a gun. I do much prefer that. All right. Well, maybe Primal got it. Maybe not. Either way, Primal's going down. <laughs> Primal Hawk down. Primal Hawk down. All right. Well, he's got that one. What else we got? Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm looking. Am I too zoomed out? Ooh. ooh what's this one? Ooh. Six hours. All right. Well, set an alarm. See you in six hours. What else we got? Boom. Where are you at? Nope. One day, 21 hours. Forget that. So there's camps and there's strongholds and there's crashes. The map is looking rather crashy at the moment. Drop is random for blueprints, normal loot, and email. 
Ugh. Gross. Leave KVK you lost? What are you talking about? Dude, we're in Kingsland. I don't know what, what you see on this map. Um, all right. Barbarian strongholds. All right, well. We got our troops marching. We're on the way. What about this one? Is this the one Primal was doing? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Forts will have yellow when ready. Okay, interesting. And this one we just looked at, right? Somebody did this? Ah, see, Primal dealt the killing blow. What if you don't deal the killing blow? Do you still get stuff? Do you still get stuff or not? See, now we're going to see if somebody snipes me from the live stream. We're going to see if I get sniped. Pew, pew, sniped. We'll see. We'll see. Ooh, I heard a donation sound, but I don't see it. Why don't I see it? Weird. Ooh, David Munn, new member of the channel. Welcome aboard, my friend. Welcome aboard. Let's get some emojis for David Munn. Hook him up. Hype emojis. New channel member, which means they get all the emojis. Huzzah. Huzzah. The last Spartan says, welcome, new guy. <laughs> yay, hype emojis. Like, yay, yay, rocking the hype emojis. Oh, yeah. All right, well, less than an hour, y'all, and these things spawn. I mean, by the time we get there, they will spawn, right? By the time we get there, they will spawn, and we'll see what this is like. Less than one hour, cool. Uh, that one was already done, and that one was already done. So we have three we need to go to. I mean, I guess we could send one march over here, and I guess I should be careful. More like over here. I'm probably going to get stream sniped. I'm probably going to get stream sniped on this, but whatever. We'll send one march over here. And we just hope for the best. I don't know. Uh, yeah, join the rally. Boom. Get in on that. All right. We picked up the rune we needed, and now we're on our way. I'm better off finding forts. I know. I'm probably... I'm probably just better off finding forts than doing this. We'll see. I mean, one hour, who knows? Is that like, when is that going to happen? Now, how does this work if lots of people hit it at the same time? Somebody help me out. How does this work if lots of people hit it at the same time? Does everybody get the rewards? Or do you have to get the killing blow? Does everybody get the rewards or do you have to do the killing blow? How does that work? Everyone gets rewards. So, like, really no one should ever be soloing these, right? Everyone that hits it. So, like, zero, there are zero times where it's correct to solo this. Which I think is a good thing. But, like, we should really get organized around this, yo. We should really get organized around this. And now I gotta, like, watch these. Oh. All right, Foxman, you gotta wait for me. I see you. I see you. Wait for me on this one. I'm coming. Slowly but surely. Lol. Since we all get rewards, there's no reason not to. Uh, what do we got over here? Nothing yet? All's quiet? <laughs> Alright, cool. Foxman's waiting. See, Foxman's in the chat. We're good, baby. 
We're good. All right. Well, I wasn't expecting to do these in this stream, but I guess we will. I guess we're going to kill some of these. Unexpected. Totally unexpected. I have one march free right now. And I sent my fort commanders to do other things. I definitely would have sent a legendary instead of Pelagius had I realized um, I wasn't going to be sending like five full marches to go do this activity. Like I thought I was going to need five marches at each of those places um, to like take it down, but apparently not. So that's easy. I guess I just go back to farming resources. Oh, a building. Building a thing to farm resources as it turns out. Sure. We could do that. We could do that. I don't know. It doesn't take much to do that. Anthony Young finally caught a stream. Indeed. Indeed. All right. So we're cruising. You know, if, I'm, if I really want to cruise, you ready for this? Here we go. Here we go. Let's do it this way, actually. All right. Go to chat. And go to Kingdom, Justice, Juice? No. <laughs> Justice Plus. Here we go. Hey, Silver Sword, new channel member. Thank you for becoming a member of the channel. Much appreciated. Let's get some hype emojis for Silver Sword, who now has access to the full range of Chisco Gaming emojis, which is pretty sweet. All right, uh, drop this into Kingdom. Boom. You were already a member. So you know what must have happened is your membership must have renewed, actually. You must have became a member exactly one month ago is what that is. Because you were already a member, and I see your badge now is blue. So you're one month. So exactly. So that, that was your one month anniversary of membership. <laughs> uh, Bella rocking the hype emojis. Nice. Nice. Can I use my Boudica in combat? I didn't realize, by the way, that it would do new members. Any Look at that. Now we got justice, baby. That 10% march speed. I don't know that I can tell the difference, but I'll take it. I will take it. As we go to these camps, which say less than an hour, but like, where are you at? Where are you at? Is it good to buy an account? I can't comment on that. That is not a thing I can comment on. Um, cool. Well, we're on our way. We're on our way. So if I go back to Kingdom 75, just as, as an example here. Let's see here. If I go back to 75, I mean, there's going to be so many of these that have to get done. There are going to be so many of these to do. Oh, my God. Look at look at this. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. There's so many. Look at this. I mean, there's going to be so much to do when we get back. There is going to be so much to do. Wow, there's so many of them. There are so many of them. And like, yeah, like you just get a look here. Boom, what do we got? In alert, level one. So it's got to get leveled up too. Yeah, interesting. All right, cool. And then these, what do these do? Come any closer and, oh, you become target practice. All right. All right. Chiskul, if you save your city cords as a special marker, change the name of it. Yes, that's true. You kill the dudes around them and it hits 100. The big camps, you get a debuff that you can't do it for three days. Wait, can you only do one big camp at a time for three days? Is that how that works? Is that how that works? Saxed, what's going on, dude? What's going on? Ooh, lots of folks from L.A. walking by. Those are our allies. They must have just done a fort rally. We're just chilling. Right now, trying to get on the loot train. 
Also, there's no way he's over there. That marker is totally wrong. What the heck? My markers are all messed up from having, I guess, gone back to 75. I have no clue where my units are. <laughs> That's awkward. We're on our way, though. We're on our way. I guess I could show you how many materials I have right now while we're waiting. We do have a lot of materials. We do have troops marching this way, right? Hmm. Where are you going? That's... That's really tricky. Where are my marches? Couldn't tell you. Where are they going? Couldn't tell you. Uh, yeah, about that. Maybe that's where it is? Maybe it updated now. Okay, we're good. We're good. We updated. We're good. I guess you could check my message and the coordinates I just sent you. All right. What do we got? Ooh, boss. Mr. Cow. How do you pronounce that? Cowlack. Silent Trial and Gatekeeper's Shield. Hmm. That's cool. It's a barbarian camp. All right. Do you need a bunch of people? The, only the big camps are worth it. Really? Only the big camps are worth it? Why are only the big camps worth it? Oh, those can drop the new green archer gloves, huh? The green archer gloves are pretty good, aren't they? The green archer gloves are pretty good. Let's see here. The green archer gloves. 2% archer health. And, you know, you have a way to get infantry stats on gloves. But archer health is not really a thing you can get easily. Yeah, these are really good. That one was a special one. And the moment you see a special boss, it was worth it for sure. Do I need a taxi to the third one? I would be open to taking a taxi. The Foxman Taxi Service. Ooh. The Foxman Taxi Service. I don't know where my marches are. It doesn't look like I've arrived here yet. But they're going there. And my marches have not arrived here yet. It looks like, yeah, Foxman's here with me. That's cool. And they've not arrived here. We're on our way. It says less than an hour. Who knows how long that's going to be? Okay. Uh, ooh, let's join a rally. Which rally will we join? That seems good. Boom. I'm even going to send these guys home. Let's join another rally. Dude, we have we need to get so much honor. We need to get so much honor. We're 29th now. We want to be top 20 when this ends, so we got a lot of grinding to do. We have got a lot of grinding to do. I don't know. Are you are any of you going for top 20? I feel like I have to to get the cavalry skin. Can we save honor point tokens from past glory almighty overlord event for the next KVK? I'm told that you can. I've never done it before, but I'm told that you can do that. Is your restart still looking for a new kingdom? I have no clue, quite frankly. I've been fully absorbed in this KVK. It's been totally nuts. The last Spartan says, yes, you can. Cavalry skin. Yes. One moment. I'll show you. First, got to join this rally. Uh, let's see. Did I have a preset for that? I do. Ha-ha. March. Okay. The new cavalry skin is from KVK. 
you go to Honor Roll, it's in Season 3, Individual Rewards. The Divine Abode is the skin, and you can see what that is by going into your city hall, and there it is, the Divine Abode. Um, 10% cavalry defense is what we're looking for there. Um, right now we have a skin that's 5% cavalry attack, but given that we're using Attila Takeda, we want to go all in on cavalry, so we want to get this skin. That is what we're looking for. Now, oh, good, we can see our marches now. That's good. That's good. Cool. All right, our marches are going places. Ooh, we're almost here. Hooray. So now we're just kind of waiting on this one. And we're on our way to this one, which we're still waiting for. And we're on our way to this one, which we're still waiting for. Which is cool. Do you have a KVK beginner video? Um, we do have a beginner beginner video, no, but a KVK playlist. Um, we have two of them actually. We have a KVK playlist and then a season three KVK playlist. I would recommend watching those or even just looking at the videos that are contained within it and picking out the ones you want. Ten out of ten, that would be the way to do it. Foxman is walking to the one outside the starting area. You mean this one over here? You going over here, Foxman? Honestly, um, the thing that would be good, the thing that would actually be legit from doing this is uh, Delane's amulet, I think. Am I? Gosh, is this the right one? Do I even care about this one? Hold on. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. Oh, I don't care about that one. It's Silent Trials, the only one I care about. Well, we'll do this for fun anyways. Chris says, my first live video and you mentioned me. OMG, totally subscribing. <laughs> Super chat tomorrow when I get paid. Well, thank you, Chris, for the positive feedback and your support. I do really appreciate it. Uh, I just took the temple yesterday. And by the way, like... If you need to wait for a paycheck to make a donation, then just like hang on to the money. I don't need that. I don't, like I like keep it for yourself. I appreciate the sentiment. Um, hang on to that. It's it's fragments for purples and legendaries. Fragments for purples and legendaries. Ugh, but it doesn't show that it's fragments. It makes it look like it's a whole thing. That's going to take forever. Is there any situation in which this is even good? Like, when would you use this? When would you, first of all, 80 materials of uh, both epics? Like, when would you use this? You take more normal attack damage. You take more normal attack damage and you reduce the counterattack damage? I mean, keep me honest, but like this seems not amazing, right? Am I missing something? And the chess piece, what do we got here? Dark Lord's Blessing. Well, this is pretty decent, actually. 5% cavalry defense. I mean, it's still only 1% better than this, though. I don't know. I guess I work toward it, but, like, color me unimpressed. Color me unimpressed. Honey Badger rally canceled. Target disappeared. Sadness forever. I can taxi back one of your armies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a long march for whatever this is about to be. Uh, all right, those marches are still going a long way. I don't think they're there. Are we getting over here yet? Hmm. Are these marches marching? Where are these marches? Where are they actually? 
It's really good if you rally a target slash defend a garrison and you only get hit by one target. But when is that the case? Like the maybe if you're defending something, maybe if you're defending something, maybe if you're a garrison captain, but I'd rather have Skolas' lucky coin, right? What's the best talent tree for a high-speed Belisarius? Well, that I can show you. You want a high-speed Belisarius, you use this build. It's the same talent trees as Sao Sao. This is the highest speed you could get. There's a new Netflix series about Mephed the second called Rise of Empires. Oh, I gotta watch that. That's cool. Are you serious? That's awesome. I gotta watch that. The thing is that the gear I'm trying to optimize for now is Ark of Osiris League, and swarming is the name of the game in Ark of Osiris League. Like, that's the whole point, is, like, everything gets swarmed. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. We're over here. We're still waiting. It still says less than an hour. We're going to wait for it. We're going to do it. And, gosh darn it, the other one? I just don't even know where my marches are. I think they're on the way. That's really hard to say. Hmm. Let me see here. One sec. Uno momento. All right, we restarted. Let's see if we get there. Will we get some cool loot? <sighs> Don't know. Don't know. Is this worth the effort? It's debatable. <laughs> Definitely debatable. All right, now that we restarted, where the heck are you guys at? All right, we're seven minutes away with this march. And we're 12 minutes away with this march. Okay, that's good at least. Yeah, we can see they're going different places. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Switch to the stronghold view. Oh, darn it, this one spawned. All right, well, Foxman's waiting for me. We're on our way. How are we going to do this, Foxman? Are we going to kill all the marches, or we just make a beeline for the boss and hope for the best? Do we just go for the boss and hope for the best? Is that the play? Foxman is 12 minutes away from the outside one. And that's the one I'm 7 minutes away from. What I could do... Hold on. What I could do is take my Sao Tsao and put them here. And let's take my Khan and have him go to this one that hasn't even spawned yet. That's probably the way to do it. Go like that. And, oh, that's 13 minutes. And this is 15 minutes. Hmm. It's not that much faster. In fact, how much faster is this? If I go like this, what time now? Oh, I'm faster. All right, all right. I was faster the way I was going. I was better off the way I had it. Let's send him back down this way. Boom. We're on our way. We're on our way. Deathstroke says you can get the purple totem, Shio's return legendary boots, and sacred grips, or the coin as an example. Not sure if the coin is better than all three. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. We're on our way. 
to these different places. All right, and thankfully Hell's Door is waiting. That's good. My materials, all right, hold on. Here's my equipment. Here's everything we have made. We've only made two epics, which is not very much. Um, we have the special talent on Iset's Sufferance. We have a special talent on the Staff of the Lost. Also, Grieves the Exile. We got a couple of those. Here's our Cavalry special talent gear. We do have some Leadership special talent gear for Ethelfled. Um, Helm of the Phoenix. We have two of those with a special talent. And we've got like three more patterns cooking up if we needed. <clears throat> we could use more special talent Vanguard Greaves, but we got really unlucky with those. We use a lot of these infantry breastplates on our commanders that use infantry. Uh, we do have a special talent Milanese plate. This is the one I was talking about where you can get 4% of stats. And uh, we did get Ranger's Trousers with a special talent, which is nice, the edged boots. We do have uh, the two pieces of the Windswept Bracer set, which is pretty good. And, uh, you know, the rest of this gear is pretty, you know, whatever. Uh, we have a Milky Way pattern and a Sacred Grips pattern. Uh, two Forest Guardians, a Robe of the Forest Guardian. I mean, we're never going to make these Claws of Forest Guardian. The Golden Age, I would love to make. The Abyssal Visage, I would love to make. Uh, we have a Gladiator's Blueprint. I didn't even know we had that. That's interesting. Maybe we'll make it at some point. Seems unlikely. Um... Yeah, we got a lot of pattern pieces. Here's our materials. Worth mentioning, we got a lot of these rocks. That's pretty much it, though. All right. How are we looking here? All right. Foxman's here. Hell's Door's here. We're getting close. The southern one has not spawned yet. And this one has not spawned yet. No spawn. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We're almost there. Seven, well, we're seven minutes away. Gross, and that's with the justice. Thankfully, they're waiting for us. Since we're still waiting, I can show you over here. Here's our material chests and where those are sitting. We have 13 legendary material choice chests, which is pretty good. 45 epic chests, which is pretty good. 175 blue chests, 326 the regular ones, whatever. Uh, here's our action point situation. We have so many of those. We have so many of those. Thank you for the blessings. We have a ton of experienced tomes. We have a ton of experienced tomes. Um, we have uh, a bunch of canyon coins. Yeah, feeling pretty good. <laughs> Somehow we have ghost candy still. We have a bunch of these three-day skins that will never get used because we have the permanent skins. We have a lot of epic commander sculptures, that's for sure. Um, we got a lot of stars. Feel pretty good about the stars. What is the canyon coin? The canyon coins are from Lost Canyon. Uh, you got to clear out this bucket pretty regularly or it gets full. And you can get Silent Night, which is like 5% of each stat for pants. Shio's Return is like 5% archer and infantry i think on boots uh and it's the material choice chest that i'm actually most interested in and they're not material choice they're random material chests how many epic boxes do i have uh like 45 i have like 45 epic boxes right now in 13 legendary boxes what's the max for the bucket it's 10,000 canyon currency so I have to clear mine out three times a day. 
otherwise it fills up. Level seven barb forts, what is happening? Yikes. That's like not a thing. Let's go build this. New troops, boom. Let's get going. We're on our way. We're almost there. What do we got over here? Ooh. All right, Foxman, should we do this one? Should we do the south one? Should we do the south one now? You tell me, Foxman. What's the good word? What's the good word? He says, let's roll. I don't know, dude, this is going to be really awkward. Do we battle these things or do you want to just go in? What do you think? I'm going to do an emoji at the one that I'm talking about just to make sure. Can we do this? You want to just run past all this shit and hit the boss? Can we do that? Is this going to work, chat? Is this going to work or are we going to get wrecked? All right. All right. All right. Just charge the boss. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> we are going to get so wrecked. This is not even... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. Now there's another one aggroing. I don't know if there's a path I could have took that would have been better. I got enough march speed for now, but they're going to catch up with me when I get to this boss. Oh, they turned around. They're no, but now they're hitting Foxman. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, here we go. <laughs> Foxman's taking all the damage now. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, look at all these guys. Oh, no. Oh, my. We, we so have this. We so have this. All right, boss down. I can leave, right? I'm out of here. We GTFO, right? Oh, we didn't get... Man, I didn't get... I got crap. Uh, bye. See you, Foxman. What are you doing? Shouldn't we leave? Why? Why are you still there? Oh God. All right. Well, rip. <laughs> He's letting his march die. All right, so it can go back faster. Okay, that makes sense. Those those rewards though. Those rewards though. I mean, like, ha we didn't even get a single piece. We didn't even get a single piece. And there wasn't a chest that dropped, was there? Did I miss it? Plus, let's say a chest dropped, okay? What happens if they hit you while you're picking up the chest? You don't get the chest, do you? What happens if they hit you while you're getting the chest? Are you just dead? Oh my god. All right, well. Rip Foxman. Good knowing you. Salute. <laughs> okay. Uh I'm going to send my Lohar over here, I guess. I guess I'll send Lohar over there. Why? Oh my god, cuz we don't own that nearby pass. It's like an eternity to get there. Oh god, that's awful. All right. Well, rip. What do we got here? We're almost here. All right. All right, we can do this again. It's only a normal boss. As long as you don't die, you get it. You continue to farm it while being hit. Oh, interesting. Chest pickup takes 150 seconds for the blueprint drops. Jeez. I feel like we should just kill everything in this one. I feel like that seems super doable. I don't know. Are we ready? We ready over here? 
Here's the ready check. Ready check. All right, we need Hell's Door and Foxman to give the ready check. Foxman has completed the ready check. Hell's Door, are you at, what's up, buddy? You ready? Ready check. Here's another ready check. <laughs> oh, he's ready. All right, we're doing it. We're doing it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right, this is the Kessel Run. Maybe not. Um, are, are we just going for the boss? We kill these things. I think we kill them. I got aggro. Boom. I think with the number of marches we have, we just clear this stuff out, right? No? Oh, boy. Now we're aggroing the whole zone. Oh, God. All right, all right, just go for the boss. Foxman's all in, we have to... <laughs> he, Le he Leroy Jenkins did. Let's just go to the boss. <laughs> oh, charge. Ah! <laughs> We're doing a Leroy Jenkins. Ice Wallow. Ha, huh, I see what you did there. Love your videos. And Ruben, $2 super chat. Long live the stream. Long live the stream indeed. Long live the stream indeed. Oh, God. All right, are we even hitting the boss? Where's the boss? Uh-oh. Did I miss it? Was I not paying attention? Is it already dead? I'm not really sure what's happening right now. We got it. The boss is down, and those rewards are horrible. I'll add it to my favorites begrudgingly and call that a day. And now I guess we get killed by these. Honestly, my repair bill is going to exceed the value of this, right? sort of my repair bill exceeds the value and what are we getting out of it experience you don't even get experience for this oh god we just should run away all right get out of here just go home it's just we just you don't even get experience really no experience for that i mean all right well See you later. Bye. <laughs> Wait, they're still fighting? Sorry, guys. All right. Uh, what about over here? We spawn yet? No. Less than an hour? All right. Reinforce Foxman City. All right. Reinforce the city. Get a ride. Free ride. <laughs> uh man well gg gg we did not get any rewards look at these rewards what is this one level one material random chest Ugh, one hour of speed up we would have got more doing literally anything else I got zeroed and I'm free to play. What can I do to gain back my troops? You lost 1 million troops. Wow. Well, Heart Lion, I have a video about what to do if you're zeroed. You should check out that video. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how bad that was. Those, those those rewards were so bad. Oh my gosh. And you don't even get experience on your commanders. That, that was definitely not worth the walk. That was not worth the walk. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. And I already have so much stuff I need to craft anyways that like, do I need these patterns? Like more stuff I can't craft for who knows how long? 
How many of those do you have to kill to get one pattern? Just signed on. Why do I look heartbroken? Um, because we were just battling some barbarian camps and like this was the loot. This is the loot from a barbarian camp. What? I mean, I know it's like free. It doesn't cost you action points or anything. But like I would totally rather that that have cost me some action points and not take a million years to get these patterns. Like a million years. A literal million of them. Oh my god. I can't even. I can't even those rewards. Paul Carthy says, now I understand. Oh, Samir got green gloves on the first try. Amazing. Thank you, Chris. Much appreciated. All right, well, I guess I joined this rally. Level eight? Sure. Sure. Why not? Join. Join rally. Ah, oh, rallied army capacity exceeded. Darn it. <laughs> um, in terms of our... Like, why are we doing forts is an interesting question. I'm doing forts right now to see if we can do this season challenge. We're at 133 out of 990 forts. That feels unlikely to me. I guess we have 32 days. In 32 days, we probably could do it. We don't know yet how good the rewards are for getting to level 80 plus. Um, may contain resource items, statues, gems, tomes of knowledge, or other rewards. I have really low hopes for what is contained in that. But I guess we'll see. We're not there yet, though. Okay, and now we're just waiting. This is the waiting game for this. We get one more attempt to see maybe we get something good. We're getting scouted. I'm not surprised. I'm actually surprised I didn't get scouted sooner, quite frankly. Collect some, uh, ooh, nice. The last Spartan, Max Purchasing War Machine. That's uh, 25 hours of speed-ups I got from that. Solid. All right, claim some goodies. Boom. I've been typing back to my home kingdom and already have two shields, a few gloves, 22 out of 30 Dark Lord's Blessing. A lot of time investment for very low return. Antonio, how long did you spend on all that? How long did you spend on all that? Extreme Mitch HD says, I'm happy with this. It is for free to play who spend a lot of time in the game. All right. All right. Very interesting. Double U says, thank you much for the, for the stream. I learned so much from it. Wish you the best. Awesome. Very fun waiting. Very something waiting anyways. Very something waiting. We'll join Haley's Rally. Nice. There we go. Raw, level nine. That's a good that's a good target to rally. That's a good target to rally. The waiting game. Do 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 do. Yeah, with Foxman, we'll go straight for the boss again. We could go straight for the boss again, I think. I don't see why not, right? Like why would we not go straight for the boss? I guess it could drop one of those chests and then we actually have to fight and we just get wrecked. But I might have two marches here by the time it spawns. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's faster than that. Oh my god. You need 140,000 AP for the forts. That's some interesting math, Spartan. I like math. 140,000 AP. Um, I definitely have that much AP. It is unlikely that I can spend it fast enough on the forts, though. They just take too long is the problem. Antonio says, I've been doing it every day for a while now, hitting all of them in my alliance territory, Z1 through 3, unless someone else has hit them. But how long total have you spent? If you had to guess, how long total have you spent to get two shields, a few gloves, and 22 out of 30 Dark Lord Blessing? Sage of Seven Paths says, My past five just opened KVK Season 2. Half of my Alliance members cannot open rock or they're glitchy. Yikes. 
Ooh, it spawned. Did it spawn? It spawned. All right, Foxman. Um, I say we go the low road. Don't you think? We go the low road. I'm going to send this back home. Since I'm not going to need it. And, hmm. Well, how do we do this? How do we do this? I don't know. This is good enough. I'm over-optimizing for my World of Warcraft days trying to avoid aggro. Being a super ninja. Being a super ninja. <clears throat> sort of. Those are definitely all going to aggro. There's no question. Oh, baby. Look at this. Look at these moves. I might be better off staying north, actually, and not aggroing the bottom ones. I think that's what I'm going to try to do is just, like, it, admit that the top ones will aggro me and then not aggro the bottom. That's the play. Which three commanders have the best expertise skills in the game? Ooh. I made a video about that a very long time ago, which is definitely not accurate at this stage. It was one of my first videos. Um, best expertise skills. Attila's is really good. Immune to silence and extra damage when the garrison's low. Okay, we won. Ooh, that's better. That's definitely better. Elite crate is not bad. Elite crate is not bad. And my Cao Cao Takeda is doing work. Did Esong get nerfed? Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Now we're doing work. All right, fam. This has been fun. We defeated a bunch of camp wanderers. We talked about how you counter Attila and Takeda. Um, we talked about how you counter anything and the different levers you have at your disposal. We're going to head out and make our way probably to the gym and spend some time with family. Hopefully your Sunday is going well and you enjoyed this stream. If you did, please do like and subscribe. That means a lot to me as a content creator. We are a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms. And until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom. <sighs> that was a good stream. That was fun. <laughs>